just the other day. We were talking about what is appropriate. And um, the Hyatt Regency, should they have their liquor license pulled because they did drag queen story time hour for kids? Uh, let kids attend. And uh, it wasn't a story time hour. It was a Christmas a special uh, with um, Rudolph, who was uh, vulgarly dressed as, and a man deer, as they pointed out. And, um, and I said, look, look at what they do in casinos, right? You don't even, you know, you got to like quickly look and walk around the perimeter or something like that to see people gambling and use it as an object lesson. I did it with my sons when they were young as well. Gambling is a big problem though. Gambling addiction now through sports betting is really hitting a lot of young men. They say sports betting is now fully legal in 36 states. And the states are making a lot of money from it. You know, they tax it. Nevada pulled in more than $61 million in taxes in 2020. New Jersey, $118 million. Pennsylvania, $124 million. That was in 2021. And now it's gotten so big that in just the first three months of 2023, they're already making more than they did for the entire year. Two years ago, it's exploding. New Jersey had already earned $72 million in tax revenue. New York had made $209 million. And Pennsylvania had already taken in $58 million in just the first three months. According to Roundhill Investments, Americans placed over $93 billion in legal sports bets in 2022 alone. I mean, they're even talking about putting sports bets on professional wrestling, which is scripted like the elections. <laughs> um, in 2021, the most recent year for which data is available, calls to the helpline run by the National Council on Problem Gambling, a gaming industry-supported group. So they, 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 uh, it's kind of like buying a carbon credit, right? Oh, well, you know, please give me an indulgence for my cent. Uh, we're fleecing people <laughs> by the hundreds of billions of dollars. So let's put a little bit of money into a gambling addiction fund. Uh, so the... Um, Calls to that helpline rose by 43%. Texts increased by 53%. Chats jumped 84% to that hotline. And so Newsweek did an article about it. And what I thought was interesting was they said, you know, why is this a problem for young adults, especially? Well, the physiology, they said, of young adults who are still a work in development, it adds to the risk that sports betting will become problematic for them. Young people, particularly those under the age of 25, still have underdeveloped brains that make them predisposed to addiction, particularly gambling addiction. Oh, well, addiction of any kind. And uh, so we look at this and we say, yeah, we acknowledge that for some things, don't we? But we deny it for other things. So if we're saying that the brains of those under you know, 25 and under aren't fully developed physiologically, not to mention a life experience where they can easily be gaslighted and scammed by other people, but even physiologically immature and capable of making decisions. It's one of the reasons why we have the laws about certain activities prohibited to young people like uh, alcohol, tobacco, voting, and, you know, maybe mutilating, mutilate, mutilating and sterilizing your body, you know, things like that. Well, how in the world... Can we put all that aside? The manipulation about gender of these people. That is a lot more prevalent than gambling. I don't see <clears throat> every time you look at any entertainment, I don't see gambling being, uh, <laughs> being pushed to us by Hollywood. You know, successful gamblers too, right? They'll all be successful. Nobody ever loses. You know, the house loses all the time, you know, in a situation. That's the way they'd have to do it. If you had a parallel to what's going on with LGBT, you would have uh, to push gambling. You would have uh, at least two or three gambling characters in each one. And the story would have to be modified to squeeze that shoehorn that in. And um, then uh, all the gamblers would win all the time. And then you would have the schools, you know, teaching kids in kindergarten about blackjack and, uh, <laughs> and poker and all the rest of this stuff, right? You'd have little roulette wheels in pre-kindergarten because, you know, they just watched the thing go around and 
You know, that, that would be the analogy. That's not happening, and yet it's still very, very powerful. Think about how powerful this LGBT stuff is. Because then you're not just playing on people's judgment. You're playing on, and it's not the pre-kindergarten kids and the kids in kindergarten. They don't have any sexual urges. It gets even more dangerous when you get into junior high school and high school. Uh, when <clears throat> other things start kicking in. Uh, and that's, that's why you, know, you look at what what uh, Florida is doing. You know, they've made it illegal from K through uh, third grade. And now they're coming back and saying, you know, maybe we need to modify that. We need to, we didn't include pre-K. And so the teacher is saying, we well, didn't say anything I could, about me doing pre-kindergarten. You know, I can start these little kids at three years old. I can start them with all this uh, rainbow unicorn stuff and the gingerbread man and all these other things at uh, pre-K. So now they're saying, well, maybe we ought to extend this and make it pre-K through eighth grade. The Florida School Board, <clears throat> which is not a legislative body, it writes rules as a bureaucracy, it writes rules. Uh, they're more rational about this, saying, you know, pre-K through 12th grade. In other words, not at all are you going to talk to people. And that's the right approach, has been the right approach from day one. I criticized uh, the Florida legislature and DeSantis for only you know, doing a little bit of it. It's like, oh, okay, so once the kids get in fourth grade, you can start all this stuff with them? All this pornography and all this gender gaslighting, you can start that in fourth grade? Yeah, you know, because you're 10 years old, you can certainly handle it, right? Rachel Levine being criticized as we had a clip uh, surfaced. I was going to talk about this yesterday. Uh, surfaced, I think, two days ago. Somebody found him uh, at a conference where he was saying, um, yes, yes, I, you know, it took me a very long time to transition. Uh, but the good thing about it was that because of that delay, I was able to have kids. Here's a clip. But I have no regrets because if I transitioned when I was young and I wouldn't have my children. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine a life without my children. And so every experience led me to here. And, um, uh, and so how could I regret that? So if he had transitioned when he was young, he wouldn't have kids because that's about sterilization of minors, which is what he's pushing. He's pushing the sterilization of minors. It's not just hypocrisy. It's pure evil. So um, he goes by the name of Rachel now, uh, but his real name is Richard. And so here is Dick Levine uh, when he was um, with a family. There he is with his wife and two kids. He's so glad that he didn't uh, change anything until after he had kids. And now here he is um, when he's not Dick. Um, <laughs> There he is today. There he is today. At least he's got his hair pulled back instead of the, uh, the mess that he usually has there. Uh, so he says um, people ripping him online for a pure hypocrisy. It is. After having admitted to waiting to have children uh, before gender transitioning, despite currently pushing to normalize it for very young children. And uh, hormone therapies, mutilation, all the rest of that stuff, that's gender affirming. Those people shouldn't have that generation shouldn't have kids. And you understand where this is coming from as well, right? All just as I was talking about this, um, esotericism, focus on yourself and this imaginary world that you live in using children to affirm your fantasies. That's how sick this all is. And then to, um, sterilize the next generation, because this is all about depopulation and it always has been. If I transitioned when I was young, then I wouldn't have my children. And I can't imagine a life without my children. But he can push that your children have a life without children. The Common Man. They created Common Core to dumb down our children. They created Common Past to track and control us. Their Commons Project to make sure the commoners own nothing and the communist future. They see the common man as simple, unsophisticated, ordinary. But each of us has worth and dignity created in the image of God. That is what we have in common. That is what they want to take away. 
Their most powerful weapons are isolation, deception, intimidation. They desire to know everything about us while they hide everything from us. It's time to turn that around and expose what they want to hide. Please share the information and links you'll find at thedavidnightshow.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. If you can't support us financially, please keep us in your prayers. TheDavidKnightShow.com.